Hi everyone, if you are here trying to understand what APRV is, how does it work, so you can get comfortable with it and using it with your patients, you are in the right place. APRV, Airway Pressure Release Mode of Ventilation, is a powerful mode of ventilation, but unfortunately, it's underused. And the main reason it's underused that a lot of us are not comfortable with it. We don't know how to initiate our patients on it, how to monitor them, how to wean them off that mode. Specifically here, I'm talking to non-intensivists. That's why I created this video series, is to simplify and explain this mode of ventilation to you so you understand it well and get really comfortable with using this mode of ventilation. And of course, you start using it with your patients. So let's not waste any time and start with our first video. Remember to watch these videos in order because the information in each video build on the information mentioned in the previous video. So let's start with our first video where I will be explaining the essence of APRV. What happened at the ventilator circuit level with APRV? How it's different from other modes and introduce you to the values or parameters we use when we put our patient on APRV. So let's start after this short intro. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and share it with your colleagues if you find it useful. So let's start. Okay, let's start by explaining what APRV mode of ventilation, how it works. APRV, airway pressure release ventilation, simply made of CPAP plus something called release phase. Release phase happens at specific intervals for a specific period of time. All of us know CPAP, but to explain the CPAP and release phase, let me draw this picture. I'm gonna draw a T-piece attached to an airway. We're having high flow oxygen here, let's say at 50 liter per minute. And we having a CPAP valve here that will create the positive pressure here. Now in this circuit, we having a pressure value will be constant, continuous, positive airway pressure in this circuit. This is what CPAP. As all of you know, CPAP happens throughout the respiratory cycle. And also we having spontaneous breathing. Okay, so it's very important that it happens through this constant pressure here will happen through inspiration and expiration and will be provided regardless if we are uh, inhaling or exhaling. Now this is CPAP. So this is the first part of the APRV. What is the release phase? If I add simply a valve here, okay, we're going, to, we're going to call it release valve. When the valve is open, as you see, some of the pressure will be lost and the pressure in the circuit will drop. When the valve closes, the pressure inside the circuit will be back to its baseline. So the valve open, some of the pressure will be released and the pressure in the circuit here inside will drop. The valve closed, the pressure here will be back to its baseline. So that's what release phase. So APRV simply having this circuit as a CPAP plus adding a release valve right here. And every time the valve open, we going into this release phase where the pressure here inside the circuit will drop to a specific to a certain value and this the 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 margin of drop or the amplitude of the drop will depends on the duration how long the valve will remain open the longer the valve will remain open the more pressure will be lost the lower pressure the pressure will be in the circuit so that's simply in aprv we do that the only difference we program the release phase to happen at specific interval for a specific period of duration and again it happened throughout the respiratory cycle so this fixed interval will happen regardless if the patient uh, who is spontaneously breathing is uh, in which phase of breathing he has or she has okay Le to make it even simpler and clearer let's draw the pressure versus time curve for a patient on the ventilator who is getting APRV. This is pressure 
and this is time. So this is the constant pressure, the CPAP. And when the valve open, the pressure will drop, as we said, for as long as the valve open. And then when the valve close, the pressure will go to the previous constant level. Let's, for the sake of clarification, let's call the pressure value here at big A, and this will be small a. Now, the period, this period here, the period here in this area, when the valve is open, this we call it release phase. This will be release phase. And it's the phase when the valve is open, as we explained here in this area. And it's the phase when the pressure dropped from the big A to the small A, indicating there will be a pressure drop. Now, as we said, the longer here the valve will remain open, the bigger the drop from big uh, the capital A to the small A. Now, guess what's going to happen in the release phase? Simply, the pressure in the circuit will drop and becomes smaller than the alveolar pressure. So the air will start moving out of the alveoli. So we are, at this point, will be going into exhale phase right and the amount of air that we will exhale will decide the subsequent tidal volume the subsequent amount of air will go into into um, inside the alveoli in the subsequent breath and this will be greatly impacted by for how long the release phase will be the time we're gonna have or spend in the release phase also will be impacted by the elasticity or compliance of the uh, lungs. The lower the compliance, the faster the air will be emptied from the alveoli, so the larger the, um, the volume of air coming out of the alveoli. And when the valve close, so this will happen when the valve open, the pressure will go from A to A, small a, and when the valve close, the pressure will go from the small a here to the big A here back to the baseline. So the release valve will allow the pressure to be lost, go from big A to small A, and when the valve closed, and we'll go into release phase, and when the valve closed, and uh, then we go back to this baseline. So the release phase represent exhale, or exhalation, or expiration, okay? That means this area here, when the valve is closed, represent inspiration. So inspiration when the valve's closed, the valve open, we go into the release phase, the expiration phase, the exhale phase. And again, this happened throughout the respiratory cycle. If the patient having spontaneous breathe, this will happen at specific interval, regardless of the patient, if he's trying to breathe in or out. And believe it or not, the patient will be very comfortable with that. Some, of course, APRV patients will be paralyzed or heavily sedated, and we will not have that issue. So the main thing I want you to understand now to wrap this up, the airway pressure release ventilation, APRV is CPAP plus a release phase as we explained. The release phase is when this valve is open and some of the pressure will be lost. The pressure drop from capital A to small a, this will create the pressure gradient that will allow the air to be exhaled. And this will be affected by how long the valve will remain open. The longer the valve will remain open, that means the longer the release phase, the more pressure drop we will have, the more exhalation we will have. Now we have to be careful because we do not want the, the pressure, the small a, to touch zero. Because that means the alveoli will collapse and more derecruitment, more hypoxia. And not, that's not the purpose of APRV. I want to finish here by mentioning some terms. Some of you may be aware, some not. Now, the time that we spend in inspiration with this constant pressure here, when the valve is closed, we call it T high. That's the term we're going to use for it. And the time we spend in the release phase, we call it T low. The amount of pressure here and the constant pressure provided when the valve is closed, we call it P high. And during the release phase, if we decide, if we tell the ventilator during the release phase here, the release phase here, if we decide or tell the ventilator to give extra pressure 
independent of this, remember, we will have positive pressure during the release phase, but it's much small. It's smaller than the capital is smaller than this value. It will be at small a as we explained. But if you want the, the ventilator to give extra pressure, that pressure we call it P law. So P law is not equal to the small a. Small a is the pressure after the valve is open, whatever pressure left. But if, the, if you want the ventilator to provide independent pressure during the release phase, it will be called P law. So T high, remember this, I'm gonna talk about it again. T low, P high, P low. And of course you need to provide FiO2, respiratory rate. And we mentioned this is spontaneous breathing type as well. Some may provide pressure support during these spontaneous breaths. And we'll come to all of that. We'll continue next video.